What's up guys, welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. We have a little bit of time today to work on the KZ project, and as you can see, I got my knobbies on. So as you can see, we put the bike up on the lift. Uh, the main reason for that is because I'm about to start diving into the exhaust here in the next week or so. Much easier to work on the exhaust when it's up on this angle. We do have our knobby tires on now. So I've had these tires sitting around the garage for a good while because they were gonna be on the Barn de Brat project. Um, but I figured they'd fit this bike a lot better and I think I was right. So let me know what you guys think in the comments, but I am so stoked with how these tires kind of are starting to really give us an idea of what this bike's gonna look like. So you picture just a nice seat on there. I think I did decide now that we're up to this point um, having the bike on the lift really allows me to kind of get a really good side profile and start to kind of really pick out some of the design elements. And I decided the plastic side covers are just not going to fit well, so we are going to ditch those. So I'll, I'll fill you guys in with what I'm thinking. I have an idea of what I want to do in this space. And it's not just as simple as building a battery box. I might actually go a different direction, but we'll have to kind of play around with that here in a little bit. But I wanted to give you guys a good idea of what these tires look like. These are uh, Continental what, Twin Duros. I'll throw a link to them uh, in the description just in case you're curious or you're building a similar bike. Um, obviously I can't uh, you know, mention how they ride yet, uh, but they sure as hell do look good. Went ahead and closed the garage door to try and block out some of that road noise. I am in the process of trying to figure out a new uh, shop space, so whether that be a house with a shop or renting a warehouse or something, but um, the road noise and stuff at my, my current location is just too much. Uh, so I am looking into that, so have to kind of bear with me for the background noise for now. But while we're on the subject of new parts, I wanted to kind of show you guys what I'm going to be doing for the exhaust. Um, so I went with this 12 inch universal muffler, bought this from Dime City Cycles. Also have a stainless uh, two into one merge collector here. I'll throw the links to these as well. So if you didn't catch the last video, basically what we're gonna be doing is kind of wrapping this exhaust kind of nice and tight next to the head here. They'll uh, both go into that merge and then we'll have the muffler, you know, roughly about there, something like that. So that's another reason why my plastic uh, side covers aren't gonna work because this will probably melt it. Um, so we're gonna need to kind of move these electronics around a little bit and kind of get creative with what we do. But that'll just kind of give you guys a, a very rough idea of what the exhaust is gonna look like. Um, I'm pretty stoked to hear what it's going to sound with this pipe. I love the way the uh, CB550 sound with this muffler. Uh, so I'm hoping this big 750 twin is going to, going to sound really good. So just give you guys a little preview. This is going to be the next video after this one is going to be me making this exhaust, uh, or at least starting to make it. I've never made a custom exhaust before, so it should be uh, an interesting project. But give you guys a little, little sneak peek of what's to come. Next item on the list, uh, we are going to try out my new jets. So. If you guys saw the last video, I ordered some jets uh, for the wrong model um, McGuni carbs. So those aren't going to work. We'll just throw those in the hoard in case we ever buy a bike that happens to have those. Um, and then again, thanks to some comments you guys left. I really appreciate the help. I believe I found the correct jets this time. I went ahead and got them from this uh, niche cycle supply. No affiliation with them, no sponsorship or anything. They, I just, you know found the link thanks to you guys and then ordered them and they look to be the right ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the bowls off of one of the carbs and we'll see if these work better than those did. Another great thing about the bike being up on the lift here is it just makes all this kind of stuff so much easier than you know being bent over or on a little you know roll around chair or something like that. Working at you know chest level is incredible. So once I get that new shop I will buy like a more official like air powered motorcycle lift um, just because this one I can't put a bike up here by myself I use like a 10 or 12 foot long um, piece of wood that's like attached to the back two people can push a bike up here but uh, no way in the world I could get uh, a bike up here by myself and that's just not you know most of the time I'm out here by myself so I want to be able to pull bikes on and off and you know, if I want to pull a bike in, the Triumph or whatever, and do some maintenance, I can do that without having to have somebody uh, come over and help me get it up on the lift. So I'll keep pulling these off, and we'll uh, cross our fingers that the uh, new jets are the right size. We are in business. So they are the exact uh, correct ones. So we're going to get them swapped out. I went with uh, 50 
and 140s. Um, so I think that's going to work pretty well with our, uh, you know, more free-flowing exhaust and then of course pod filters. And on the uh, subject of pod filters, some of you guys said that these style pod filters don't work well with these carbs. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit more research, which I probably should have done uh, before I bought these, but, um, you know, lesson learned. So I'm going to learn some people have really good success with these carbs with some type of pod filter. So I just need to figure out which one it is exactly. So maybe you guys that sent me the link um, to the correct jets want to let me know the exact pod filters that you're running. That way I can just mimic your exact setup. If you already kind of did the hard work and got them running uh, well, just let me know which pod filters they are and I'll order some up. But now that we know these are the right size, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and order another pair uh, to go in the left carb. I'll go ahead and put these in, get this back on the bike and we'll move on. So moving on with what we can get done today, I want to cut this chain off. This thing is just rusted and um, you know we're definitely not gonna try to bring that back. So cut the chain off, get a new one on order. Uh, I'm thinking about going with a gold uh, style chain, if you've seen those before, uh, to kind of match this, there's like a gold pinstripe along this tank. Um, so I think a gold chain will kind of tie that in nicely. I am gonna go ahead and remove this rusty center stand. Um, one, it's just kind of big and bulky. Two, um, if it's a scrambler style, you know, we're trying to have as much ground clearance under there as possible, uh, and having this thing hanging down is not gonna, um, you know, help us do that. So we'll remove that, we'll remove the chain, and then, I don't know, we'll see what we can get to after that. few short minutes center stands out um, I think that cleans up a lot I am going to be cutting off those brackets underneath just because they're not needed anymore and they're kind of still sticking down uh, you know obviously chain came off real easy with the grinder um, I am going to kind of just leave some of these little tabs and stuff for now uh, just until we kind of finalize you know exactly what modifications we're going to be doing what kind of uh, you know potential rear fender and all that stuff I'm just gonna wait um, to cut that off because I would hate to cut something off and then wish I hadn't, you know, want to use it to mount something later. So we're just going to leave all that stuff for now. There's going to be a lot of kind of finish cleanup. I know on this side, I still have like the, the hinges where the original seat mounted and we're going to need to kind of remove that. And so again, I'm not going to bother kind of getting into the nitpicky details right now until we are a little bit further along in the build. The last thing I'm probably going to have time to get into today is I'm going to pull the side covers off. Uh, for two reasons. One is we still need to actually do the final oil change on this bike and the oil filters behind here. Um, but the main reason is our clutch cable is probably 18 inches too long because if you saw the, you know, when this bike first uh, came into my possession, it had those big, huge ape hanger style handlebars on it. Um, so obviously we have an excessive amount of cable length. Um, so I need to kind of figure out what I want to do to shorten that cable, uh, most likely just buy a replacement that's shorter. Uh, but I need to see exactly what the cable design is on the inside of here um, so I can try and find uh, the correct one. So we'll get to popping these off. I'll probably grab my impact driver. Um, if you guys work on any of these old Japanese bikes, um, you'll know that these aren't Phillips screws. They are JIS, um, Japanese Industrial Standard, I believe that stands for. Um, and also they tend to strip out. So if you use a Phillips head screwdriver on this, especially if they haven't been removed in years and years and years, uh, there's a really good chance you're going to strip them. So an impact driver and the proper screwdrivers are a must have. And again, and I've mentioned it a few times on this, but I do have the impact driver I use on Amazon um, on my link. I'll, uh, I'll throw it in the description below. I want to get in the habit of trying to get all those links out to you guys. Uh, it does help support me. Uh, it doesn't cost you any more money to buy anything through those links. Um, but again, it helps support the build. So let's get to pulling uh, the side cover off. So luckily this uh, side cover actually just comes off with four 10 millimeter bolts. So I didn't need to use the impact driver, but just for you, um, you know, people who may not be familiar with how it works, 
This is uh, the impact driver itself. Here's a little adapter. This has a 3 8 um, so if you had to put a socket on here to get something off, you could do that. You could put this little adapter and then there's these little um, Phillips, but they actually fit well in these GIS ones as well. Into the end, you put that against, you know, here's an example of your, um, you know, screw you're trying to get out. And then you smack the other side of this with a hammer. And basically what this does is it pushes in and simultaneously twists at the same time. Uh, that way you're not like pulling out and stripping something you're you know hitting it in and then twisting it uh, which acts similar to like an impact driver uh, it's a way more effective at loosening stuck um, bolts and screws uh, without stripping them so highly 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 recommend if you're going to work on a japanese bike that is pretty much any age but especially one from the 70s you have to have one of these or you're going to be cussing and, and fighting um you know a lot so just bite the bullet buy one of these you will not regret it i promise so pulling this side cover off careful not to tear the seal around the shifter down there it doesn't look bad condition of our front sprocket is good i mean no teeth are worn nothing like that so we don't have to worry about replacing that clutch cable looks like a pretty standard one. So I'll just take a picture of that. So I remember when I'm looking online later uh, for the replacement that we get the correct style. Everything else in here is, you know, greasy and dirty. Um, but overall, not too bad. And our oil filter should be uh, right behind this case right here. And again, this is so much different than the Hondas I'm used to that have it right, nice, easily accessible in the front. It should be right under here. So I'm not going to do the oil change uh, right now just because I do want to warm the bike up a little bit before we drain it all out. Uh, and I can't do that until we get our new jets in. So really, I just wanted to uh, check out this front sprocket, see how dirty it was in here, and then check out the style of our clutch cable so we can order a new one. Well, that's where I'm going to call it on this video, guys. Uh, I know we didn't get a whole heck of a lot done, but uh, I really wanted to just get out here, show you the new knobby tires, um, try to get as much work as we can. Now we know we can order a chain, uh, new pod filters, hopefully. Again, if you guys help me out with exactly which ones I should get. Uh, the remaining two jets. Uh, what else do we need to order? I don't know. I'm sure there's some more stuff, but... That'll give us um, some parts on the way to continue this build. In the next episode, I am going to start cutting up that exhaust. We have the TIG welder and stuff out to, uh, to really get to work on that. Hopefully, we can um, get that all put together in one video for you, but we shall see. Um, I'm going to get to work here in the next uh, day or two, so expect that video soon. Um, thanks for uh, checking in on this video, guys. Thanks for being patient with uh, content lately. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe. Throw a like on this video. Throw a comment. Let me know what you think so far. And uh, I'll see you guys soon.